Last week on United Nations Older People's Day, a number of organisations in Barnsley came together to improve life for the elderly in the borough. A conference, including Barnsley NBC and Barnsley Older People's Forum, was followed by an event at Kendry Hospital to bring together different services for the elderly and to uh, show what opportunities there were for social contact and stimulating activities for older people. BLTV was at Kendry Hospital to find out more. So we asked the main organiser, Fran Postlethwaite, just what was going on. OK, right. Well, the day is part of an international celebration of older people. It's United Nations Older People's Day. It's officially the 1st of October every year. And this event was organised to mark that day. And what it's about is celebrating the fact that older people can make a massive contribution to society. Uh, it's, it's really arguing against the idea that we're a burden and a problem because we're all living too long. But actually saying, you know, we can have fun, we can contribute, we can share our ideas and our experience. There are lots of societies and groups that people can get involved in. Uh, and, and that's what today is really. Um, I mean, I'm delighted by the turnout. I was not at all sure how many people we'd have. We, we publicised it in the local press and posters and through contacts and emails. But it was one of those things where you just send out a message and you don't know whether anybody's going to come or not. And by my reckoning, I think there were 70 or 80 people here, a lot of them from the local community. And I think that shows that it meets a need, that people like to come along and meet other people find out about groups and organisations of interest to older people. Some of them are about health, some of them are about safety, the police and the fire service are here. Some are, um, of them are about enjoying yourself. So U3A, um, the History Society from Wordsboro is here, there's a the Photographic Society. So we're trying to really show the range of things that old people can get involved in and, um, and have a nice experience. Uh, and I think so far it's proved very successful, a little bit hot and a bit crowded, but then we're the victims of our own success in that. Uh, and I think just bringing people together is what's the important. And, and I think we've done that, and I hope we can build on that in, in the future years. Well, thank you very much. U3A's brass ensemble of the old blowers was a revelation. Coordinator. Yeah. Um, Last year, the U3A had a, a 20th anniversary uh, to celebrate uh, going 20 years, and uh, it was fantastic for those that went. Um, and there were lots of entertainment on, and Bernie Clifton did a, a, an hour and a half spot at the end. And whilst he was on, and he's 80 years of age, I, I suddenly thought about, why don't we see about doing some kind of musical group along with the string alongs that we'd already got? And I read an article uh, in one of the tabloids about dementia and it said the way to stave off dementia uh, was either learn a second language or learn music and that really cemented the idea in my mind and in August I put out an interest list across the U3A <coughs> asking if anyone would be interested in forming uh, a kind of brass ensemble and I was astonished by the number of people that put the names down. Now, when we actually started in November, apart from maybe James on uh, the, the end trumpet there, who hadn't blown for 50 years, and believe it or not, played with Teddy Eastman, for them that can remember, yeah, um, <laughs> joined me and said, Let, let's, let's make this happen. Everybody else apart from myself couldn't read a note of music, let alone play a brass instrument. So I think, when you think about it, in 11 short months, just practicing once a week, first of all, they've got to learn the rudiments of music, and then start to learn to play an instrument. And I was astonished when most of them went out and bought their own instruments. I mean, that's how dedicated they are. And after 11 short months, this is where we are. We might not be Black Dyke, but we're creating the sound. The most important part of all this is, we're actually helping to keep that brain active. And that's what it's all about. Learning music and playing an instrument keeps your brain active. And uh, I can't remember, I think I can only remember one person ever in my life who was a, a brass band enthusiast and can play, 
who might have developed dementia. So I'm convinced it helps. And so back to us playing, we're going to keep on going and hopefully we'll get better and uh, hopefully some more people will join us and we might finish up with a full band. But uh, that's where we are today, 11 months on. So please don't think, you know, oh, they sound rotten. It's all about these, they're all beginners and still learning to read music. And I think it's fantastic. Not only that, I think it's astonishing. So thank you very much. They greeted the mayor and mayoress with a rousing tune. Great to be here this morning for a number of reasons. Like I said at the Age Concern Conference at Priory Campus yesterday, I've got to declare my interest in these, in these types of events because on November the 13th this year, I'm going to be 65 and I get my state pension, which, which, is, which is unlike my, my wife who has to go to 66 now. She missed out on a couple of months. She's one of those in that category, 1952-54, where it went from 60 to 66. So she's lost six years' pension. I think it's just on 50 payments. It's disgusting, isn't it? The, the, the women missing out like that. It wouldn't be so bad if it was one year. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off my political soapbox now. Just to say that it's always nice to celebrate something from the United Nations. When I, when I was a member of Parliament, I had the great privilege of going around the United Na Nations in New York, and um, you'll not know this, but I think Britain's one of the most recog recognised and respected um, members of the United Nations. In fact, when, when, we, um, when we went over there, I think there are mem 12 members of the Security Council and nine members of the security, that's the top United Nations officials in the world, nine of them came to see us as MPs, and I think that underlies the importance of the United Nations. The United Nations do a lot of good work in the third world and what have you, but what they also do is promote issues, very important issues, like the rights of, and the quality of life of all the people, and as I say, I count myself in that category as well. So I'm sure we're going to have a fantastic day today. Um, I think I've said enough now, but I'd just like to... Well, uh, uh, and who would have expected the fire service to be there? Okay, so I'm a fire community safety officer. Um, we work a lot out in the community with the vulnerable people, um, and especially the, age, uh, the elderly. Uh, so I'm here today to really showcase what, what we do and what we can offer. Um, specifically, you know, smoke alarms, we do fit smoke alarms, and we do have... So, no. No, we do have nice. what's right. called, um, this is a smoke alarm for people with hearing impairment, so they could be profoundly deaf or uh, severe loss of hearing. So this sits, this sits at the side of the bed and this sits under the, the mattress or the pillow. So when the smoke alarms are activated by smoke, this will vibrate under the under the bed or the pillow and this sends out a strobe alarm, a strobe light out into the bedroom to wake that person up. Because obviously if they don't have the hearing they can't hear the normal smoke alarm. So that is a fantastic piece of kit and it's all free. Um, next we do um, just to test your smoke alarms once a week we ask because if they're up there you forget about them um, and a lot of people do not test them. So these are our little pointy sticks, which uh, for the elderly especially, if they've got a loss of balance and things like that, we we'll just ask them to stand up against the wall, um, if they're, they're dizzy and things like that, and then they can test their smoke alarms from there, and we ask that once a week. Um, we do have lots of other things as well. So a lot of our fires obviously come from smoking, and we do have these, where you would make sure your cigarette is completely and utterly extinguished and it goes in there just to make sure it's absolutely out um, those are stub stores we've got a lot of our fires as well come from um, cooking people get distracted they wander off go around to the telephone things like that especially from chip pan fires we still have a lot a lot of fire deaths from that so we've just got little little timers cooking timers that help with that so it will go off you know when you're cooking and ready. Um, a lot of health, healthy ageing, health and well-being is a big thing at the moment, so we like people to keep as well as possible, uh, doing little exercises, we can sign them, signpost them onto Age UK, lots of other different agencies, um, just keep them as well as possible and safe in the home. 
Well, thank you very much. As a fire community safety officer, we will do what's called a home safety check. We'll come into your house, we'll have a look at any possible uh, potential fire risk that could occur, and we'll advise you on all of that. Uh, we'll look at overloading plug sockets, we'll look at cooking, we talk about your bedtime routine, which would involve shutting doors, switching all your electrics off, things like that. And the most important thing we talk about an escape route, an escape plan, um, because lots of people don't obviously think about that. Um, how to get out of your house in the event of a fire, where you keep your keys, um, where you keep the mobile phone and things like that. Um, and if you can't get out of the house in the event of a fire, how to stay safe inside your house until uh, the fire engines come. Brass gave way to strings. A sing-along by the Stringalongs, also from U3A. The newly reorganised community nursing service was also Could present. You just explain what it is you do and what you know the benefits you offer to older people. Right, yeah, so we're like Bandley Neighbourhood Nursing Service, so we're a mixture of district nursing and community matrons that emerge to cover the whole of Barnsley. So we cover six neighbourhoods, which are mirror the six council wards in Barnsley. And our aim is uh, uh, to visit patients in their own home, so we're a housebound service, so we visit patients in their own home and also care rooms and sometimes other environments like social centres and provide nursing care when they can't get to the GP practice or can't get to the hospital for example and need ongoing treatment. So what we would do is we would visit them in their own home and deliver that care to them. Um, in, the, in like coordination with the GP practice, social services and also the voluntary sectors and stuff like that. So really forming a big uh, multidisciplinary network around that patient to really deliver some core valued uh, based nursing. And you're a district nurse, I yes, think, I am, and yes. um, how do you fit into, I think obviously um, most, you, know, you fit into this uh, programme very well because you're part of the Merge Service. I am part of the Merge Service and what would happen from a patient's perspective, um, they would need uh, any person that they've uh, got identified nursing need would either be seen by the doctor or from a hospital. A referral would go into our communications uh, office and they would contact me and then I would come round to their home and do a nursing assessment on that patient. Whatever the needs be, I can refer on to multidisciplinary agencies like physios, uh, social services if they need social care, um, equipment, equipment stores and equipment services and offer advice and support um, aiming to like, get them back on their feet. A lot of people have said that um, social services of this kind, medical services of this kind are, are too fragmented, but this seems to be a, a very good um, example of bringing it together. It is. We've realigned our services and modernised our services to meet the needs of patients. And this is before there was an old service, which was district nursing service, but now we are a neighbourhood nursing service and we've brought in together community matrons, long-term conditions, uh, people have got like diabetes, all the all different elements is now under the umbrella of nursing services. And I suppose most of your services then, are, um, you know, most of your users are probably the older end, so to speak. Yeah, I would say that 95, 96% of our uh, service users are elderly, uh, house-based. We've gone with the ethos of the right sort of principle, so it's about seeing the right the right care, getting the person getting the right care at the right time, in the right place, and really sort of focusing back on that patient's needs and doing holistic care around that patient, rather than it's being very sort of prescriptive in delivering care. It's all about the patient now and what we want to deliver. So yeah, from a service, um, we do see very lot of elderly, vulnerable people as well, and we have to support them and sort of mobilise them and get them back on the feet. And sometimes perhaps this is the only contact that person might get in a week. So actually we have to make that contact count to make that valuable for the patient, so yeah. Well, thank you very much, Dan and Eileen. Uh, we won't take up any more of your time. Bye. While the Stringalongs kept everybody happy, we spoke to the advocacy services, Vicky Lowe and Emily Fisher. Yes, certainly. The, the advocacy service um, provides statutory and non-statutory 
advocacy services to older people and people with a range of disabilities. So for people who are in residential and nursing care, um, we support those people as their relevant person representative so that if they um, perhaps object to being there, we can appeal on their behalf. Um, and then we also, put, also support their carers as well. Um, so if somebody is confused about the finances going into residential care, it's quite a confusing time, uh, really emotional. So we can support them, uh, let them know that what their rights are and what choices that they've got throughout that process. And uh, Emily, what's, what's your role? So my role is that I'm a generic advocate. I do some RPR work as well, but that's uh, for people who are living in Barnsley but funded by a different council or different local authority. Um, just to check that happy when they live. So the generic service can be, there's not a set remit in terms of you need to be having a care review or you need to be in a home. It's anyone who's elderly or with mental health issues or learning difficulties who would like support communicating with professionals, perhaps support at meetings, care review meetings, and to understand what's happening in terms of their care package. We can help make decisions by looking at all the information together. Do uh, do clients contact you individually or are they referred? It can be either. You can refer yourself to our service. We've got some forms of this today. Um, you can do it over the phone, calling our head office number. Or sometimes professionals do prefer, refer people in, sorry, who they think might benefit from our advocacy support. And how many, uh, how many of your clients are from, the, from, you know, up from among the elderly? Um, uh, majority of them or half or what sort of proportion? At the moment we support 90 individuals, approximately 90 um, individuals, people in residential or nursing care throughout the Barnsley area um, and that's in what we call our statutory service so there the home and the council will provide us their, their details and we will go and support them as we say that if they're not happy they would want to appeal or if there's anything else happening in their life mm -hmm. that they're not content with or there's something going on it might be something to do with medication it might be something to do with their diet so it's about that communication with that person and supporting them to be able to speak up as well right well thank you very much a, a very necessary service music isn't the only option for older people with a creative bent the Barnsley Photographic Society exhibited some breathtakingly beautiful photos. Yeah, well, putting on exhibitions is part of what we do. Um, these are a selection of photographs taken by uh, a member who got up early in the morning, went to Lock Park on a frosty day and took lots of photographs. We have people that travel all over the world. Instead of just bringing back boring holiday photographs, they're a bit more interesting, especially when they're put together with music. Some we do um, print and we frame them and mount them and have competitions occasionally. Uh, maybe six times throughout the year we'll have a back to basics session for new members to show how to use the camera and get the best from it. Uh, whatever their age, we do get members coming who are retired. They used to use film photography or they can remember their dads using it. They've still got it in the cupboard, they want to know if it's any good. Why that it's been kept in a reasonable um, area, it should still work. But with digital cameras now, of any age, our members tend to range from 98 years old down to 10 years old. At present, we've got a new member. There are a few in the 20s, 30s, the majority of 40s, 50s, 60s, who've got the time to go out, take photographs, come together on a Monday night at the Emmanuel Church and discuss what we've been doing and then look at ways we can help each other improve the photography. And uh, obviously you're hoping that you'll get some uh, more members and interest from uh, the people here today at this um, um, uh, event for the elderly. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, or anyone else who sees the, uh, the filming that you've done. Um, we run meetings from September through to the end of April. Throughout the summer we go off on different photo shoots. Uh, this summer we've been um, probably local, Cannon Hall, um, Yorkshire Sculpture Park and New Miller Dam to get a sunset. Um, so we, we don't travel far but most of the time, most of the events we do are from September through to the end of April. 
every Monday night. Well, what I would always say is you don't have to travel very far from Barnsley to get some absolutely no. beautiful shots, and a lot of people don't realise just how it's marvellous the yes. <laughs> countryside around here It is, be. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Jane Holiday of Age UK Barnsley summed up the day's event and the conference outcome for us. Yesterday was a formal conference and it was based on the eight domains of the World Health Organization age-friendly cities um, and so the idea is of yesterday that we got together with a, um, a lot of people who provide services for older people whether it's in health or social care or transport yeah. um, and also older people themselves and brought them together to have a look firstly at what the age-friendly um, the age-friendly cities is all about and to get some examples of what's happening elsewhere because this is a worldwide thing um, so we had speakers who came through from Leeds and told us about what they've been doing there yeah. and we had another speaker who came from uh, who is involved with the age friendly cities who told us about what was happening right across the world so what we wanted to get from yesterday was some actions to take forward across the different domains of what is considered to be age friendly which is things like transport, housing, social participation, community and health services uh, and so what we were looking at is, is what people thought we already did really well in Barnsley, what they thought we didn't do so well in Barnsley and then to create a number of actions that we would take forward from that so the conference yesterday was um, was taken forward between Age UK Barnsley and the local authority. Uh, so, but there were a lot of different organisations that worked with all the people that were involved in it. So the idea going forward is that we take the actions that were identified yesterday and we try and make some of them happen. So the, the, so the a bit of work yesterday, a lot of work for the rest of the year. In the next few years. Yeah, the actions that we actually took away, there were quite a few of them. And there were, as I say, across the different domains, but also because older people themselves have different priorities. So for a younger older person who's fairly fit, it might be that a major issue is around the cost of public transport. For an older, older person who's got a disability and public transport isn't accessible for them, it might be about the provision of more specialist transport. So we came away with a lot of different um, actions that we will be looking at taking over the next year. And what we will do is we will put all of that information on the Age UK Barnsley website. So if anybody wants to have a look at what happened at the conference, or they want to see what actions we're taking forward, then they just need to look look on there. And also, if anybody is interested in being involved in taking these actions forward, just one action or more than one action, they just need to contact us because what we want to do is involve everybody in taking it forward and making a more age-friendly place. So, from an enthusiastic day organised by a lot of hard work by elderly people for elderly people, it's goodbye for now from BLTV. He is looking forward to Barnsley, the age-friendly borough.